We are preparing for our annual eclipse. What you can expect for Northern California. I'm ABC 10 Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods in Sacramento, the capital city, and we have a chance of seeing at least a partial view of what they call that ring of fire. Now, if we were to see it over this past weekend, it would have been fantastic. You know, we got to wait until the 14th of October to see that annual eclipse. And you can see we've been seeing temperatures in the 90s, sunny skies and very warm conditions. But now we're about to turn things around. So the timing may not be perfect for this turn back to fall weather with more clouds and showers in the forecast. The first weather system is on the approach. So that kind of breaks down that high pressure ridge that has been bringing us the heat. The weather changes that we're expecting this week, just to give you a heads up on some of those changes, much cooler temperatures, slight chance of showers, as well as breezy conditions on Monday and Tuesday. You can see the timeline with these early fall systems is really tough to get a lot of that precipitation coming our way. We'll at least see more cloud cover in the forecast for our Monday. A few uh, chances for showers on and off throughout the afternoon. And then the back edge of that system rolls through with another slight chance of showers, mainly for the east side of the valley through the foothills and parts of the Sierra on Tuesday evening, finally winding down by the time we get to early Wednesday. But in terms of measurable precipitation, like I said, it's just really tough to get anything coming to the ground. So we've got mainly along the coast, a slight chance of measurable precipitation much farther along the coast up towards the northwest corner of California. Could see upwards of about a half an inch to an inch of rain, but locally, very likely we're not going to see much in the way of measurable precipitation. Now, we'll very likely stay on the warmer side of things by the time we get to October 14th, which is that uh, annular solar eclipse. But look at this, likely wetter. That's what we're going to be tracking heading into our viewing of the solar eclipse. We've got a lot of weather systems that are in the offing here in the Pacific, and this is the pipeline that we're going to be tracking right through the week into the weekend. Kind of looking at that forecast visibility, there's the line that will be the best maximum eclipse. Uh, over 90% of the viewing will be possible, but you can see we're kind of shaded in this poor category here from Sacramento through the northern part of California, right on the corner of Northeast California. We have the potential of seeing the maximum for this annular eclipse and up towards Oregon, but a lot of us are going to be seeing cloud cover. So places that actually have good viewing don't necessarily see the maximum viewing except for Texas, parts of uh, New Mexico, as well as Arizona should have some pretty good viewing of this. You can see the path right here. We're in that 80% zone right here in California and Sacramento. So again, unfortunately, even though we have 80% of the viewing, it's very likely we're going to be seeing it through a mask of cloud cover for at least this year's solar eclipse. But We've got more in the offing in the not too far distant future here. Now, in terms of our eclipse impact timeline, 90 minutes before the partial eclipse will begin. Now, you have to use special glasses or make your own or go to maybe a facility that may be doing the viewing in a safe way. You never want to look directly into the sun, no matter what especially for these annular eclipses, because there will be that ring of fire around it. It says basically it's not totally eclipsed for this one. 15 minutes before solar energy decreases, believe it or not, Cal ISO is preparing for a drop in our solar energy output during this time frame, and temperatures actually drop as well. It won't be totally significant but just enough that you might start to notice some weather changes. Now, 30 minutes before the sky starts to darken, we're only going to see 80% of it. So again, our skies aren't going to completely turn dark this time around. 10 minutes before, this is kind of interesting. It should be interesting if anybody has cats or dogs because behavior of plants and animals start to become affected because of the dimming of the light, and they are very much uh, patterned after what's happening in the sky. And then five seconds before, it's what's called Bailey's beads. A sunlight along the edge of the moon starts to kind of glisten in the valleys of the, of the sunlight kind of coming around the moon there. So it should be pretty interesting. But as that moon starts to come over the view of our sun, that's going to be, begin in Sacramento at 8.05. 
maximum 80% covered at 920 in the morning, and it will end at 1043. So we have roughly about two hours and 40 minutes of seeing this. Unfortunately, again, that sky coverage isn't going to be really great for us because we've got another weather system moving its way inland early Saturday morning, pretty much bringing us cloud cover throughout the Pacific Northwest all through Northern California. And that'll take us through when we have that maximum of 80% coverage at 930. You can see the cloud cover just kind of streaming through here, not really clearing up much throughout the day either. So once it gets here, it's pretty much going to stick with us for the eclipse. Now we've got future eclipses coming our way. October 14th, Saturday, is the annular solar eclipse. Then we get to March 24th, 25th next year. We've got the penumbral lunar eclipse. That's when the moon uh, drifts through the shadow of the Earth. So that could be kind of a cool sight to see. But everybody's gearing up for April 8th next year, the total solar eclipse. That one, not necessarily the best viewing here across the West Coast, where we are going to see it is going to be right through Texas and parts of the uh, Great Lakes as well as New England. So it should be pretty cool. There are people already making plans to go spend their vacation next year in April. We'll only see 40% of that if you plan to stay a little closer to home. But there is still some stuff coming our way next year, which should be pretty cool. Our forecast as we start to see some of this cooler weather come through, 60s up top for this year, 70s down low. Across the coast, we're in the 60s and 70s. Inland areas, again, will drop those highs into the 70s, so about a 20-degree drop in our temperatures. And we'll see the cloud cover kind of streaming through periodically here with a chance of showers lingering for the foothills and the mountains through Tuesday. Along the coast, we've got the rain on Monday and then we clear things out. Again, not the best viewing per se for the solar eclipse by Saturday, but it will be nice and cool outside. Just going to have to try to see that through all the cloud cover. But again, you want to do that in a safe manner. You never want to go out there and uh, see that solar eclipse, no matter what, if it's just partial, full, whatever, you always want to do it in a safe manner. Make sure you have those special glasses. Hey, if you like this uh, weather forecast, as well as these little additions that we do, you want to make sure to get our weather playlist. You can do that by downloading the ABC 10 app on ABC 10 Plus. You can get that on Roku, Apple TV, Fire TV. We've got a lot of great uh, weather specials on there. Mega flood, water wasted, California drought series, as well as these extended forecasts. That's on our weather extras tab on ABC 10 Plus streaming app.